Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to our programming series. Today we are taking a look at Euler problem number 28 and we will be using Python 3 to solve it. As you can see I've already created the base file where I have a method that can be called if this is the file we run on its own where we have a method that is the entry point for our main pi and if you like more information about that check out video number 2 on this channel and um, here is a function that we will use to actually code the solution that we have in mind. Problem 28 is copied in the top here and it's called number spiral diagonals. Uh, we take one argument which is the size, which is not the number of spirals, in fact it's the size of the side, side length, and it's 1001. We will be using a slightly smaller test case when we run this on its own. And the problem is starting with the number 1 in the middle and moving to the right in a clockwise direction. A 5x5 five five spiral is formed as follows. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 3, 4, 25. It can be verified that the sum of the numbers on the diagonals is 101. So if we take this line and this line and sum all the numbers that are on it, we get 101. You may pause the video and try that for yourself. And note that we've counted the 1 only once. So although two lines are running through it, we count it only once. What is the sum of the numbers in the diagonal? in a 1001 by 1001 spiral formed in the same manner. So let's have a look at this grid here. There's one in the middle, then we have a grid of size 3 around it, and then we have a grid of size 5 around it, and then we'll get a grid of size 7 around it, and then we'll get etc etc. All the odd numbers are represented as sizes of this grid. And let's see. Um, we can tell a couple of interesting patterns when we look at this. For instance, for a 5x5 grid, we will know that the top right corner will be 25, which is 5 cubed. Now, this should not surprise you, because we have a 5x5 five five grid with all the numbers from 1 up to whatever, how many numbers we use for that. And for a 5x5 five five grid, that's obviously 5 times 5, which is 25. So 25 ends up in the corners. And um, let's actually start with that. Um, we take an n, and first uh, sum we will keep track of some uh, spiral sum value. And this is at the start set to n times n or n squared. And this is obviously the same. Then we have a side length. This is n. And as you can see, the next number 21 is uh, the side length plus 1. Uh, or in fact, it's 25 minus the side length plus 1 again. Um, so we're going to do that, I guess. Uh, we're going to. Uh, to this, uh, we need a loop construction because we are going to do this four times. And then we're going to step in one spiral and do it again. Uh, so let's, in fact, let's initiate this to be zero at the start. And then for Uh, n in or for i that's not override or n value in range we will start at n we will drop all the way down to 0 or in fact we will stop at 1 in fact we will stop at 1 and set the spiral sum to 1 that, that might be nicer and um, we will step through it at a negative base of 
2 we will have side length 5, then side length 3, then stop because we don't want side length 1. I want to know if this actually stops. Um, let's just check it out. And we already have side length 5, so we're gonna uh, move those two statements and then give this file a try on its own. Yes, that's perfect. It's showing me 5, which is the initial side length, it's showing me 3, and it doesn't show me 1, which is fine by me, because we've already accounted for the 1 in the initialization here. So, this is good, and then we want to... Uh, this needs to go up to 0, 1... With three, so up to but not including four. Uh, side length. All right. So what's going on here? Uh, we have the uh, spiral sum we're going to append with uh, our side length, our current side length, because that gives us the 25 here, and it, uh, we're going to subtract from that uh, the distance that we are away from 25 around the borders. So at the first run, j is uh, 0, so we're not going to subtract anything. For this one, we're going to get another 25, but that's too high, so we're going to subtract one of our side lengths, and those side lengths need to be one shorter than the actual side length, because otherwise you'd overshoot and end up here. So to compensate for that, we do this again. This should give us a nice result. And it doesn't, we're overshooting. Why are we overshooting? Maybe I can see the problem more clearly if we do this. This is correct. That's no good. This is right, this is right. This should be 101. Oh, right. I shouldn't be using N here, but I I want to get the Q or the uh, square of the current iteration of the spiral we're looking at and not the maximum. Right. No, it had to be something small like that. Alright, so we take whatever side length we're currently looking at a qubit to get the 25 and since it said n before we weren't looking at 9 but we were taking another 25 and overshooting by 40 ish uh, 60 ish all right so that's that um, and we should be able to run this all the way up to 1001 and get the correct answer Spoiler alert, if you enter this number over at Project Euler, you will get the green check mark. And as you might have seen, if we start main pi, we get this answer pretty quickly. 28 with the default argument, please. It took us virtually no time whatsoever. Now this solution is kind of brute force. It's simply um, starting at a point we can easily find and literally walking around it four times and, and keeping track of whatever values you find. Uh, so could be a more refined way of doing this. Um,
and there in fact is there are several ways of doing this more precisely there actually is a formula uh, which uh, gives the answer without any form of recursion um, but I'd like to look at something that does use a little bit of recursion but also uses a lot more math than simply walking around it so it uses only one outer loop instead of an outer and an inner loop and I think that's uh, slightly more elegant than the solution we currently have if you are interested in uh, finding a um, in fact a cubic formula for um, for solving this then I highly encourage you to do so but it will not be covered in this video we will need uh, basically the same setup for uh, the formula I'm going to use which is basically the same as this here for I in range and we are going to go up So we're going to start at 3, we're going to run up to n plus 1, and we are going to use step size 2 again. So we're going to calculate something for um, a grid with side length 3, a grid with side length 5, a grid with side length, etc. And the calculation is going to be. Um, as you saw, we um, what what's going on here is basically we take the square of the current side length four times. So let's simply start with that. We want our current side length cubed four times, and then we subtracted something of it, which was this bit and we took four iterations at this so the first time uh, this was zero the second time uh, this was one so we subtracted this value from our total once then it was two and then it was three so we subtracted it totally six times so we can simply say we want six times our current side length minus one again Uh, right, and we are going to add this if we um, if we didn't add it to the spiral sum, but simply execute this formula for uh, any given n, uh, we would get. In fact, we we could do this. We could say uh, def sums of corners and. And we could simply use this formula, or in fact, if we were to insert i here, then we'd get this. And if I were to not run it, but say that we want the sums of corners function here, then executing this file will give us 76, and that's the correct sum of all the values on the side length 5 spiral here. So now this function solves for one spiral but we want to have it iterate over all the spirals from 1 up to uh, the side length 3 up to the side length 5. And 1 once again is our base case and from side length 3 on we want to take whatever running total we have and add to it the corners of current I so here you can clearly see how we take all the values for one spiral and here you can see how we keep track of multiple iterations creating bigger and bigger spirals as we go so if we now check attempt number two this should calculate the spiral for 1 uh, as a base case plus 3 plus 5. We've just seen that 5 gives us 76. We can also quite clearly see that adding 9 and 3 makes 12. 7 and 5 also make 12. And adding the 1, that should give us 25. So 
cumulatively adding 25 to this should give us 101. Let's see if it actually works. It doesn't return anything yet, so it doesn't. We return the spiral sum. There we are, 101. So again, if we run this um, in main pie, There we are. It's about four times faster than the solution you previously had. Uh, time doesn't register on something this quick. Um, but we've eliminated um, four loops uh, and broke that down into one calculation. So that's a, um, that's a performance enhancement of a factor of four. But do note there is a formula that does this without any recursion, without any looping. Um, and it um, finding it takes a bit of uh, algebra, and it's um, it's quite a fun exercise. Actually, I highly encourage you to do so. You might find tips and tricks about it on the Euler forums. And it will leave you with a quadratic solution rather than um, something with squares in it here. Or a cubic solution, excuse me, instead of a quadratic solution here. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend you to also look at that. That's it for problem 28. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my GitHub and I will see you again for problem number 29.